here. Um, welcome to our July board, library board meeting. Um, I'm Rachel Steenholt. I'm um, present here at um, City Hall. Um, we have Carlos Holly here. We have Tony Gehrig. We have Tim. And we have our newest board member who's replacing Jan. So this is Chris. I don't know if you want to say a little bit about yourself. Um, putting pressure on you right away in the beginning. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, you could just maybe give a, um, a little bit of your background and then maybe something that you're currently reading or a favorite book. And hopefully that's not too high stakes. No, that's not too bad. Okay. okay. Again, my name is Chris Shipper. I'm an avid reader. Mm -hmm. And so when this opportunity came up to join the board, I thought, oh, I'd be a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. I was actually in on some of the um, meetings before they rebuilt the new <laughs> library. And so that was, that was fun for me to... Um, know that the library was still going to stay downtown versus going to 13th Avenue they were looking at or even further south to do a main library. Mm -hmm. So I was very happy that it stayed downtown. I think libraries belong downtown. And let's see, I am pretty civic minded. I'm a master gardener for Cass County. I've been that doing that for about 19 years. And I just like being involved in my community. And your favorite book or oh, something that you're reading right now? Yeah, right now I love the new... Um, Lucky Day hmm. books. So right now I, I just got a Lucky Day and I got The Last Widow by Karen Slaughter. Hmm. And I'm liking it. Well, well welcome. We're mm -hmm. grateful to have you. Um, well, thank you. And now we have somebody to ask our gardening questions to. So uh, <laughs> yeah, if you have any questions. <laughs> a million. I have a million. I was watering a weed last year for the whole summer. So Yeah, and um, admiring how it grew. Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> flourishing. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, okay, let's see who we have. I see four um, calls um, on our screens here. So why don't we identify some of the board members that are on the um, phone? Carrie Peterson is on the phone. Okay, we got Carrie Peterson. Hi, Carrie. Hi. Hi. Uh, Whitney is on the phone. Whitney Oxenbell. Hi, Whitney. Two more. Hello. Yes. So we got Whitney and Carrie. Are there two other? Oh, the other two are yeah. on mute or him? Tim. Oh, they're him. Okay, never mind. We actually have two people on the phone, not four. Um, technology is something I'm learning here. So, okay, so we have Carrie and we have Whitney, and then we have on the phone, and then we have three board members present. So we do have a quorum today. Um, today is a unique meeting because we have our regular scheduled meeting, and then we have um, our annual meeting right afterwards. So let's hop in. Um, the first item is an action item, so we need to approve the order of the agenda. Move to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second. Carrie Peterson I'll, I'll second. <laughs> we got multiple seconds. Okay, well, I heard Chris first. Um, so we got a um, motion to approve, and we have a second. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that passes. Um, and we just have Mary join us okay. in person. Okay. So hi, Mary. We have a, you are sitting next to a new board member. She's replacing Jan. So this is Chris. Very cool. Yeah. 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 Mary, nice to meet you too. Yes. Sure. So okay. Now the next item that we have is an action item as well, and that is um, the minutes of the June sixteenth meeting. Move to approve. There, second. Second. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> no. Okay. Hey, Rachel, would hey. you have people say their names when they're first and seconding a motion? And I always forget that, Betsy. You're so great about that. Okay, so that one, um, we had Mary second. So Carlos first, both of them, and then Chris did the second for the first one. Uh, and then um, Mary did the second for the second one. So thanks for reminding me. Um, okay, so we got those approved. And so let's go to Sunny um, with, the, um, with the staff report. How are you guys? We're All good. right, so you'll have to forgive me. I tricked myself into doing the board report a week early. So there are some things on here that I've <laughs> already passed now. So <laughs> bear with me for a moment. Um, Children's programs, as everyone knows, we're not hosting them at the moment. Um, 
but please go to our website, check out what we're doing online, view our program registration. Things do fill up very quickly, um, and if you ever have uh, something come up where you've registered for a program but you're not able to attend, please do call and let us know because we do have um, a wait list on that new software. I think I might have told you about that a few months mm. ago that we never really got to get to. Um, so now we get to use our new wait list feature so we can kind of get through. Can you that. explain the wait list one again, that feature? So yeah, so basically um, before we just didn't have it at all. So now if a program is filled up, you can ask to be notified if a spot opens up. So if somebody gives us a call and tells us, hey, I'm not actually going to be able to do this, um, we can bump them from the list and then move the next available person up. So you might also get a call less than 12 hours ahead of time, um, depending on how much notice that we get. But we do try to, to get through it so that everyone, we want our programs to be as full as possible. Sure, yeah, great. Yeah. Um, teen programs that we have coming up, we just did um, the virtual board game. I think it was pretty cool. Um, so as always, check out our website. Um, the teen craft right now that we have, it's just um, kind of a first come first serve. It's the Nordic runes. So if you want to do a teen craft, just give the library a call and we'll set one aside from you. And when they're gone, they're gone. But we have we have quite a few of them. Uh, adult things that we still are doing the the crafts for those so this week it is dragon eggs um, again get on that wait list or look for our future uh, crafts and get on for them we'll still have our stay at home book party this Thursday um, join us on Facebook tell us what you're reading and then we'll also be having what uh, another one of the sessions of the the pairs well with so the librarians will tell you'll tell them what you're drinking and they'll tell you what book <laughs> might pair well with with your beverage of choice so we're going to be doing that july uh 21st to the 23rd um our 90s trivia was a big hit for us um so we are expanding on that so we have up and coming on uh, i believe it's august 12th yes august 12th we have Virtual true crime trivia. So mm. if you think that you're pretty knowledgeable about serial killers, uh, dial in, <laughs> let us know what's going on with that. Mm. Um, we also have the history hunt that is still going on. We do have pamphlets. They are just located on a table in the breezeway. You can just take one and then just start walking around. Um, you don't have to go into the buildings this year, just as a reminder, um, but a lot of people are using that as a good way to get some exercise, get out, social distance, but enjoy the sunshine. So that's pretty much all we've got coming up in the short term. We've always got long things going on behind the scenes, but any questions? Questions, comments, concerns for Sunny? I, I, I can just add that yeah. the, while we were closed, the biggest thing was the take crafts for kids, teens, and adults. Those were huge. Um, they'd make like 150 of them and they'd all go. Mm -hmm. Like if there was one single craft for I think teens and um, children or whatever, those those went mm -hmm. in a big way. Mm -hmm. And they're still going. Yeah. yeah. So it was interesting what you learn, you know. Um, so there's always maybe a future in take, take and go crafts as it were, so. <laughs> yeah. And we have a lot of people who, I mean, she, I had a woman come in today and pick up a bunch of them for her kids, and she was so grateful that we were spending the time to do it um, because it was giving them something to do, and it was giving them something library-related to work on at home. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of staff time go, goes into putting those things together, mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously. So as you can see in Betsy's office, the styrofoam stuck piled yeah. up in the back. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about some, does anybody else have some more questions, comments, concerns for Sunny? <clears throat> Um, this is Whitney. I do have a question for Sunny. Um, Sunny, could you go over the guidelines, what patrons should be doing when they come into the library for safety during COVID-19? And also, ha can you tell how it's been going for staff since opening? Has it, has it felt like things have been keeping clean, like people have been social distancing? Take it away. Yeah, from what I know, at least at the CERC desk, um, things have been pretty going pretty good. Um, if you haven't been in recently well i know you have been with me because i see you all the time um but the furniture has been removed from the breezeway um every other computer is removed um 
so we did kind of build in the social distancing and if I miss anything Tim please jump on in sure. um, but we do uh, we have big signs up right in the walkways that are like you know please mind your social distancing wash your hands masks are encouraged <clears throat> that kind of thing we do have masks at the public service desk so if anyone wants one or needs an extra one we have them to hand out to people um, most people I think have been pretty good no one's really said too much to staff we've had a there's always a few um who who have an opinion but most people have been pretty good about it and i think we have been keeping um a log kind of I, tim might have some information on that or i don't know um, if we've run those numbers just to, yet to um follow up on sunny's comments to add in um one of the major things that we wanted to kind of a nice segue into my report was certainly prior to opening was working on you know all the things we needed in place before we reopen and one of them was enhanced cleaning during peak hours so essentially what we have at all locations is uh, a circuit cleaner going uh, and a circuit of cleaning of all the high touch uh, areas of the library at Maine we have two one on the first floor one on the second floor uh, certainly there at the Dr. James Carlson and also at Northport. Uh, also, if you remember at the last board meeting, we, we adjusted the, the language of the uh, behavior uh, policy to include uh, the need for social distancing at public service points that uh, allow staff to be empowered to request the public to mind social distancing at uh, public service points. And certainly we had training uh, prior to opening where we were lucky enough we have a connection with theater B through staff so we brought actors in to kind of walk through scenarios at um, uh, at the different service points with staff and uh, Sunny was a fine participant mm -hmm. of that situation <laughs> yep um, so I would say you know so far so good I, I think as you can see in my report per the packet a lot of discussions with getting that uh, to where it was, obviously moving the furniture, getting the plexiglass installed, uh, getting the, the, identifying the cleaning circuits, identifying funding for the cleaning, who's going to be doing it, um, all of the above. And I can tell, uh, as director, I can, you know, say it was really a good experience working with city administration, elected officials, and everybody to really help us get to where we needed to be to get open. Uh, so far so good, but certainly it's a constant um, consciousness, I think, and attention to detail on everybody's part as we go forward and control the things that we can control in terms of uh, maintenance of employee areas, um, masks um, on staff, and I think the staff have done a tremendous job with that. That's not been an issue at all. Um, so, yeah, I kind of delve right into my report. You can see there in uh, per the packet, a lot of discussions, a lot of meetings involved with that. So I think so far so good. Mm -hmm. um, certainly will evolve as the situ situation evolves, but certainly it's it's one day at a time as we go, go forward. And one thing that we have been getting a lot of questions on um, at the circulation desk is, well, I, I turned in my items, when are they gonna get checked in? So just in case people aren't aware, we are quarantining everything for the CDC recommended 72 hours because the books are plastic coated. Mm -hmm. um, so we do wait that long before we check in your items. So they might be on your account a little bit longer than what you're used to, but with fines being shut off right now, it's not a problem. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. If it's on there for a little bit longer than three days, then give us a call and we'll, we'll see what's going on. Um, but that goes for all items that a patron has touched. So we've had patrons who are like, oh, I was just in the other day. I looked at this book, I picked it up and then I put it down. It went onto our pickup cart. It immediately goes into quarantine for 72 hours. <laughs> so um, there's kind of been a transition there with getting people more used to, if it's been touched, we do try to play cautious sure. and put it away, um, but always put things on hold, um, and then we'll we'll get to them as soon as we can. I do have a follow up question yeah. with the with the plan. Uh, well, with the op opening, um, just first a compliment that I had used both the the pickup service 
um, where somebody came out and I met them at the door. The no contact curbside. The, yes, that was wonderful. Um, and then I've also been in the library since um, and picked up books that way, and that was wonderful as well. Um, I guess, so kudos, because that the both systems very efficient. It seemed like it was, my experience was wonderful um, on both sides. Um, are you guys still offering the no contact for folks who are uncomfortable still in this time, or has that been shut off? That has been stopped as of reopening. Okay. Um, one of my concerns was we weren't fully aware of what the dynamic of being reopened was. Um, we're still not at full staff, and we wanted to be open full hours because mm -hmm. we think that's important given limited access to all in terms of computers and limited spaces and this kind of thing. The other concern that I have is the logistics of it when open. And certainly, I, I think if we're open a month or so and looking at how things are and how, where staffing is, um, I'm willing to revisit with the admin team. You know, so we've received a few emails and I've, I've gotten a few phone calls in regards to continuing it. The thing of it is, logistically having an outside spot where items are set in terms of no contact, um, it's, it, it was a little bit easier when you're closed because usually the only folks wandering up to the door are the folks coming to get their stuff. Here you got people, I mean, they're coming and going, coming and going, and you know, you got, how do we, how do we make that no contact when you have full access? And logistically, where does that no contact area go, and how does that work? Um, and essentially, also looking at you know, there's always a, we have to be careful um, in terms of expanding service, and what are the parameters do we need to identify in terms of the continuation or the reinitiation, and what parameters will we identify as an organization to articulate? okay, we're gonna reinitiate curbside, no contact curbside, then what, what are the parameters that we say, okay, it's post pandemic now and we wanna go back and we'll just kinda withdraw that service. Cause I think we need to be clear in our mind to that. Um, because we, we wanna make sure that it's successful. We wanna make sure it's manageable um, because to a certain degree it is time intensive it's space intensive in terms of staging the items and uh, the various separate things that go on in regards to that, and especially in terms of pulling. Because um, we we posited it right, like with, with <coughs> within a couple hours initially, mm -hmm. I believe, Sonny. Mm -hmm. And see, that would be at with when you're opening, you got co desk coverage <coughs> and different shifts and everything going on it's finding the manpower and, and then we have to be clear that what kind of scope compared to what it was when it was closed mm -hmm. to the scope that we want to identify when it's open. Mm -hmm. I'm open to those conversations. I just want to get through reopening and see what that looks like and get a couple of weeks or a month under our belt because it might start kind of qu quiet as it is perhaps right now it's been um, the first week was steady. Like I said, the first part of this week is rather clo uh, quiet. Things are picking up at me in this afternoon. And see if we start ramping up and ramping up and we've already set the date or communicated that we're gonna redo no contact, we could be in kind of a, a whole, how are we gonna do that with the staffing sure. and, and get that done? So that's kind of where that conversation is. Okay, so we'll wait mm -hmm. and see, it sounds like. Yeah. Okay. And especially since, I mean, we do have the two page positions that got unfrozen that closed on Tuesday, but then we've got the other page position and an LA one position Correct. that are still going to finance on, yep. on the 27th. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So there's openings. Yes. Okay. Ish. Um, ish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, more questions. When I didn't want to cut you off if you had more questions. This is Whitney, and I have another question. I don't know if this is for Sunny or Tim, but a notification went out that um, overdue books should be returned to the library now that it's open, and fines, as Sunny said, are not accruing yet. I'm wondering when fines will start accruing and how you will notify patrons that fines are going to start accruing. I'm 
in terms of a timeline, um, probably in, within the next three weeks, three, four weeks, uh, in terms of notifying, certainly in the same manner, multiple manners, probably uh, a press release, social media, uh, you know, also emails, kind of notifications that what you're referencing. So a multiplicity of ways to, to let folks know. Uh, certainly if folks come in and they have a real significant story that they tell us in terms of that, we won't hold it against them. Um, but timeline, we're looking at between two to four weeks. The big thing there is, um, uh, again, just getting through the, the, the reopening and know that we're, we're set on that end and, and work our way back to fines again. I, I kind of have a follow-up with that, if that's okay, if I go ahead, jump in here. Yeah. Um, this is Whitney again. Yep. So uh, I've noticed other libraries that I've been following have, um, uh, some of them have been uh, getting rid of fines on adult um, books, and we have gotten rid of fines on children's books. Has there been any discussion on getting um, taking out fines for adult books, especially during this time when some people may not feel comfortable you know, like leaving their house? So um, just like a general discussion about that. Thanks, Tim. Well, we've, we've had that discussion at an admin team level prior to the pandemic. Um, you know, certainly, once we got into closure, we certainly, you know, held off fines. Um, again, I, you know, I'm open to that conversation. I just want to get us on the on the far end of opening and to a certain extent, uh, you know, it, I don't mind looking at that, having that conversation in the future. That's a interesting question. Actually, that was one question that I had, Whitney, was about the fines, um, just because there was a couple books that I've been holding on to uh, for quite some time that I did return. But um, but also, I don't know if anybody caught, there was like a TED radio hour, if anybody's been listening to the podcast during this time a lot, but there was a timely TED, uh, I think it was TED, the TED radio hour, where they interviewed um, somebody from the Milwaukee system, and they were talking about Fines. I think it was Milwaukee, the library system, but they were talking about the, the fine thing in general and um, how, you know, the benefits of not having fines at all. And I imagine you guys are aware of that, and that's in the library world, a discussion and, and everything. But it's just kind of an interesting time period that we're in right now where it's almost like this little case study that you can do since, time, since fines are being um, put on hold um, because of the circumstances just to kind of look at what the benefits would be of doing something like that. Um, so kind of like a little research case study is fall, falling on our laps a little bit. Um, so um, just found that interesting and timely. Um, so popped up on my podcast the last couple of weeks. So, um, so that was an interesting question. Um, Whitney, I don't know if anybody else has anything about the fines. Go, oh, go ahead, Chris. Well, I do. I just had a question. Do you ever count on fines as a source of revenue? Good question. Well... Uh, it is, you know, on a budgetary, on an annual budget, uh, part of that process is we do a 12-month look back and identify an estimated amount that we expect to accrue over the coming fiscal year and essentially posit that towards the city. And they, what they do is they say, okay, you, you estimate that you're going to have $70,000 worth of fines in the next coming fiscal year. So... What they do is at at January one, we have that seventy thousand dollars available on the revenue side in our budget. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, you know, it's never been a real hard. I mean, I've, in, in all the budget meetings I've always been at, it's never been, you know, Tim, where's the fine money? It's more, you know, where's the how's the state aid doing? That kind of thing. I think currently. Um, on the city finance side and, and certainly in city looking at you know the impacts of the pandemic on the city uh, there is a revenue impact that they're very sensitive of and can sit in part of the discussion certainly looking towards the 2021 budget and different aspects of the 2020 budget so I, I, I would say at this moment that any discussion of revenue reduction it would be sensitive to a certain degree um, certainly open to discussion the future of you know where we do with fines on 
<clears throat> adult items. I would say, though, uh, currently that there is a sensitivity in terms of uh, revenue uh, across the city departments. Uh, sure. That's just, and, and that's every city in the United States is facing that you know, to some degree. Uh, so I, I would say I understand the conversation. We've had that initial conversation um, uh, certainly on the library admin side, I, I would say at this moment that on the city side that there's a concern in terms of revenue. So sure. does that answer your question, Chris? Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah. From the podcast perspective, um, it seemed, um, I don't know if the, so yeah, if it, you know, budget is something that we have to think of. And then um, one of the positives that they said on the, was just that that can eliminate a barrier to um, they made it sound like fines can disproportionately affect um, different so socioeconomic statuses, and so if you eliminate that, then that would encourage people to. Um, so that was just, you know, that's one of the theories behind eliminating, at least presented on the um, podcast, which was just very interesting. So, um, but lots of different considerations to make. But um, okay. Um, well, we Rachel, this is Whitney. Can I yeah. jump on that for one go second? Go for um, it. Tim, do you have the do you have uh, demographic information on people who are like the top fine payers at all, or any kind of information you can bring to us? Because uh, what Rachel was saying is one of my concerns is for um, individuals that might not be able to make it to the library, either those with transportation or people experiencing homelessness or even elderly people that might not want to leave their homes. Um, that might be um, impacted by continuing fines, especially during the pandemic, which we don't know how long it will last. Do you have any kind of data you can bring to us on those being impacted by fines the most, even in the past, you know, couple of years? I'd have to go back and check and see what the, the ability of our integrated library system and what it's able to provide in that regard. I don't want to speak off the top of my head because certainly haven't dug around like that in terms of fines, but we'll see what we can do. Um, <clears throat> maybe we could uh, put on our agenda, because I can think of all sorts of backup questions on this topic of fines. Uh, maybe we should just put it on the agenda and talk about fines one of these uh, meetings. Sure. I'm. <clears throat> that would be... I don't know what you guys mm -hmm. feel about that. I'm seeing some nods over from, for those who are listening via <laughs> on the phone call, I'm seeing some nods from um, Chris and Mary. Um, so Carrie and. Yeah. Do you need a motion? I don't know. Do we need no, Betsy? No, I think that just goes on the agenda. It would just, just go on. No, good, Betsy, okay. we got no. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that would be interesting to explore. Um, any other thing on the fines? Because I do have another follow up question. Yeah. Uh, Sunny's just in the hot spot. That's fine. <laughs> Um, any other questions on the fine conversation before we kind of, um, okay, the other question I had um, was just a follow up on for those people that are, I know you guys do a lot of outreach where you'd go to older, yeah, to older folks um, facilities and you bring the books to them and what is the update on that during the, I can, yeah. yeah, well certainly um, that, I mean, the, the we're not doing that, obviously. I mean, they're not letting outside folks come. Okay, so, so it's their policy, because you guys are doing the quarantine for the 72 hours, so in Right, no, but we're just the folks on site there, I mean, we they basically told us that was way back in March, that okay. a lot of the those agencies just said, I'm sorry, this is too troubling. Sure. We're cutting that off. Um, so certainly we're doing some remote stuff, some virtual stuff. The outreach folks are in, in contact with their uh, mm -hmm patrons at those sites in, in discussions. There was a dial a story that they put together <clears throat> doing some other stuff. Uh, so as we go forward, we're looking to identify, you know, maybe uh, where the individual that kind of the events coordinator person from said retirement or uh, home agency uh, comes on site and gets basically is the point person to collect items, materials to take to uh, the retirement place or one of our partner agencies. So, um, yeah, that so that a lot of that's kind of where that is right now. So we're obviously not visiting any okay. sites, and we haven't been doing that since March. Okay. Okay. 
And I have one little add-on. So like Tim said, that they, they are doing a lot of things kind of behind the scenes, trying to get in touch with them remotely. Um, but they are taking advantage of this time. I, I think if those of you who have children who have been in the children's library are probably familiar with the labeling system that is on the top of all the series. Because if you've got 400 books in various tiny series, it's hard to find the next one. Um, they are going through their entire large print collection and labeling every single thing so it will be easy to know which book is which part of which series mm -hmm. from the spine so it's going to be a massive improvement in efficiency not only for us um, but for all the volunteers who will be pulling those books in the future so it's a big project but we're super excited about it yeah that's great that's great well those are all my questions um opening it back up to make sure that everybody else's questions comments concerns get answered um, this is Whitney again. I have a um, COVID-19 related question for Tim. Is this a good time to ask it? It's fine. I know this is supposed to be a staff question, but um, Tim, could you talk about um, a pro the process you have for if a staff member tests positive for COVID-19? What kind of reporting do you do? To who do you notify? Right. Um, we worked on this obviously prior to opening. Uh, the big thing is working with uh, employee health would be the first contact, certainly human uh, resources with the safety manager. So we have a whole uh, protocol. I, I can't, I don't have the paper in front of me. It's quite in, in, uh, involved, but certainly we had a contingency plan that we put, I can bring that to the next board meeting uh, that we put in place certainly before we even identified a date for reopening. So yeah, certainly working through, you know, all the city protocols that have already been established uh, uh, employee health, the employee health nurse, and, and working through that, working through uh, certainly the direct uh, supervisor. And, you know, again, based on public health, what they said is, you know, it would, you know it's kind of not like, it would really depend on the, the individual and the individual situation, and, and then kind of what we would do after that, depending on the situation. So those are kind of identified kind of options. Um, but I can certainly provide that at the next board meeting. But we certainly put a contingency plan in place before we reopened. Um, do you do you notify? Do you do a press release and notify the public as well? I guess that was the main aspect. Will Will the public know if a staff member um, tests positive? We would be perfectly open with the public. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Any more questions? No. Well, thank you, Sunny. You're welcome. Yes. Okay. So, Tim, we might have delved already into some of your, spilled over into some of your director's reports. I, I think I did. Comics. I think I went through the pretty much the whole thing. Okay. You see, you're welcome. Great. Up. You know, uh, yeah. Yeah. Unless well. there's any other questions. Obviously, the just per the paper there, the big things are just getting ready for opening. All the meetings involved there and all the hard work and all the help. Yeah. Um, a lot of good support. Staff was great. Um, you know, and I, I'm glad we're open and uh, folks, we're getting back to library stuff, which is always good for everybody. So, um, I hate to bring this up again, uh, but uh, a number of new, um, what should I say, uh, well, I'm having a senior moment. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, a number of new. What is the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, grants have been uh, uh, put forward for public during the COVID uh, system. Are we exploring any of those options? You know, in terms of needs, I would say that obviously the primary need that we had obviously is the reconfiguration of the locations <clears throat> in terms of you know, uh, plexiglass and, and all the PPE and that kind of thing. And I would say what we were able, you know, the city does a wonderful job. You have the emergency operations center and that was up and running. So we really worked through them per the instructions of city administration to really identify that. Mm -hmm. So we were never wanting in terms of resources in regards to the reconfiguration to prepare ourselves for reopening. 
I would say where we are right now in terms of operating, we're we're healthy. We're very healthy compared, you know, per uh, we're at 50% of the year, and you can see we're around 44, 46, and that lots to do. Obviously, when you're closed, you're not paying for security and, and various things. Um, so, you know, with the time involved with grants and that kind of thing, I wanted to focus my time on what you see in terms of my report. There it was really working with our internal resources that we know and get what we need to get in place to get reopened, instead of a maybe for this or that or you know money here, money there, uh, work through the efficiencies, the emergency op operations center, and get it done that way. Carlos, you got follow-up questions on that? No, no okay. well, not for the time being. Sure, okay. Um, any other questions for Tim on, the, on his report? No, okay. Then let's move on to, we don't have any unfinished business, so that's great. We will move on to new business, which is not an action item, but it is a um, review of main merchandising experience project. So Tim? Right, if you remember, um, and for those of you who, that weren't on the board back in October of 2019, we looked at, we identified, I identified up on the second floor at Maine, an area that was really underutilized um, and really thought, well, you know, based on the strategic plan, one of the things was identifying as more merchandising of collections and making more appealing. So with that is working with uh, image group architects to come up with a proposal that init you know, identified initial items and additional costs, brought it to the board, the board approved it. Uh, the project, it's now all in place up on the second floor, though some of the furniture down in the community room, unfortunately, but uh, the vast majority of it is up there. And I just wanted to circle back and walk the board through kind of where the initial estimates were and kind of where the, the project ended in that regard. Um, you know, the big thing is, again, we looked at, the, on the revenue side, uh, looking at initial estimates of unrestricted, don uh, the overall project we estimated around uh, just with a little, cushion in there around $49,000 uh, and looking at oper you know, renovus, renovus, uh, uh, revenue sources of unrestricted donations, endowment distributions, operating budget, and friends of the library. Uh, and then we look at the final amounts on the next column and you can say thank you to the friends mm -hmm. for buying the, the chairs, mm -hmm. the very nice chairs upstairs. The good thing, the very good thing is um, the pre-pandemic uh, uh, market provided very good, very large endowment distributions to be utilized, which allowed us to really reduce the unrestricted donations to be utilized, and we didn't have to touch operating budget, which is great. great. Yeah. Um, which is good because you know, when you think about endowment distributions, are one time money, and anytime you're doing a project like this, is a one time cost, mm -hmm. so it fits. Mm -hmm. On the expenditure side, you can see that overall we came in very, very well uh, based on, compared to the initial estimate of costs. One of the major savings was, you can see there in terms of the tables, uh, they initially thought that we're gonna have fabricated tables and working with the architects, we were able to get millwork tables which were significantly cheaper, mm. which was great. Uh, they're just, they're very nice, they're sturdy, they're not going anywhere. So it's really satisfying, even in the troubled times, we were able to work through the project, get it in place um, under budget, and, and, and especially really good on the revenue side, so we're not uh, impeding on uh, operating budget in any way, and reducing the very liquid aspect of unrestricted donations. So I'll, if anybody has any questions there. So it's all wrapped up, the project's yes. all done. Mm -hmm. Nice, good. Um, questions for Tim on the project. It's always great when we can save money, I think. So that, that the fact that we came under and um, improve and, and make improvement. At, you know, we only have so much space. Yeah. And yep. you got to make every inch count. So yep. it's obviously good. More questions? Any other comments, questions, concerns about that? Okay. Thanks for the update. Sure. Uh, we'll move on to the statistical reports, and we'll start with June usage. 
Well, we were closed in June, <laughs> so uh, I think those pretty much reflects that on the first. That's pretty straightforward there. Uh, you can see a little, some activity in terms of attendance, in terms of remote uh, programming, but nothing in compared to a June with summer reading program and being on site, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's pretty straightforward. Again, in terms of circulation, uh, it's the same story there, very limited. Um, certainly a bump up in terms of electronic, which is not a mystery, um, but yeah, impacts there. It'll be interesting to see go forward once we get into August and through the end of the year and how that plays out. Um, but this year we'll definitely have an asterisk next to it. <laughs> hmm. Questions for Tim on usage. No, you can move on into financials. Right, um, the first one, the donation summary, uh, you can see not nothing came in in June, uh, certainly uh, though you can see the movement of the Stensland donation to the endowment principal of the $61,899, which is nice. Um, and also an expenditure out based on the, the project that we just talked about, kind of some finishing costs there. Uh, and then that $176 of basically friends money for uh, children's summer reading prod, uh, program prize books and afternoon supplies so that's on the donation side of the expenditures any questions no nope. in terms of operating uh, as I mentioned before you can see through 50% of the year lapsed we're just below 44% of the budget expended again uh, still working through that and, and certainly uh, budgetary concerns on the city side being conscious of that as we move forward to the end of the year. Questions for Tim on that? No. Okay. Well, thanks for the report, Tim. Oh, and then revenue, well. Oh, uh, revenue. Well, we kind of talked about, but go ahead. It's playing, essentially. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. That, there's a little <laughs> box at the bottom. Well, there's a that's before March, or the 17th of March. But, yeah, uh, yeah. So that's that. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, then we'll move on to the Friends of the Library report. We don't have a friend of the library at this meeting. Um, big, big thanks to the friends. Yeah, big thanks to the friends. As you can see from um, even just that little update of the project that we did. This is just a plug for anybody who's maybe out there listening to become a member of the Friends because they, as you can see, they are great, um, great, great friends to um, our library. I want to I want to give a plug to them. They're, yeah. they're having an outdoor book sale Okay. on Saturday, August 8th. Great. Between 9 and 5. Okay, perfect. So outdoors. Outdoors. So. Yep. And the store is opening for limited hours at Maine on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So. And you said the outdoor one is at going to be at Maine? Or? Correct. Right out in the, in the plaza there. And do they need volunteers? Do you know about that at all? You know, they. you might want to uh, contact Mary Beth. They might need folks to help them. Folks, okay. I know I'm going to be moving tables. Okay, yeah. If you're a mover, you're always a mover. We That's need that That's what happens. Um, and what's great, if anybody's ever not been to one of the book sales before, the books are like 25 cents or 50 cents or something. And it's a great wave that they um, can generate. First off, for those listening that have been using this time um, to clear out their attics and basements and yeah. um, donating stuff. Um, I don't know if they're still bursting at the seams. I think for a while they weren't accepting donations because I think they just didn't have the storage space for that. But um, Keep, keep the friends in mind if you're in the process of cleaning out stuff. Oh, careful. Not more than five boxes at a time. Oh, okay. They, they have a limit. We have a limit. Okay, okay. There's not a lot of storage. Okay. Has it really exploded during this era? I well, noticed, I don't, um, I noticed um, places like the Ark and uh, they have they have stop. whole new containers every day to try. Well, I came to work one day and somebody had deposited like five boxes of books by the staff entrance. And, hmm. Oh, and boy. left them there, but okay. Anywho. Well, maybe call ahead to see if you are thinking about making a big donation to um, to them. Then maybe call ahead to see what their current donation policy is. 
Um, and certainly if you're looking for things to do during this time, then come to the book sale and find some great things to read. Um, and again, I'm plugged to become a member of the Friends because they are instrumental to helping us out. So, um, so that is a plug for the Friends from a number of angles. Um, so we will move on to public comment. There is no public at this meeting again, but um, I do want to um, thank Tony for coming. So Tony is our liaison um, to the um, commission. And so it's great to have you here. And um, I don't want to put you on the spot if you wanted, <laughs> if you wanted the opportunity to say anything. But it's great to have, uh, you know, the, the somebody, you know, to have you here. So, um, you know, to the commission, to if we have any needs, or you have the pulse of the library to be able to, sure. you know. So I don't know, not to put yeah. you on the spot. I it's been a learn, learning experience for me. I, I, growing up, we didn't really use the public library very often. And in talking with Tim and others, uh, the amount of use that, get, that gets drawn out of the resources that we give you guys is, is really amazing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know half the things you guys did there, so now I take my seven-year-old whenever I can to the downtown library because we yeah. don't live very far away, and yeah. he really enjoys it. So awesome. I'm trying to get him into being a reader much more than his dad, but yeah. uh, it's a good first step, and I'm glad to be here. Yeah, well, great. Well, thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. um, so um, hang tight. I'm about to close this meeting, but we got a second one right after this. So um, so our next regular meeting is August 18th. Um, we'll be exploring, we've been doing the, the call plus the in-person kind of combination. We've been kind of discussing each month whether we're going to keep doing that. And um, I just want to make sure people are feeling comfortable. Um, don't want to push people into this environment too soon. Um, so stay tuned about um, whether or not, you know, those kind of options for the next meeting, which will be August 18th. So this meeting is adjourned, and let's get started on, I'm gonna pull up my agenda for, on my phone for the next meeting, which is our annual meeting. So, um, so we do this every year, um, hence annual meeting. Um, so what this is, is um, well, several action items. Nothing but action items. Oh, the journey is We do, that. yeah, so we have some. So the first one is to approve the order of the agenda for um, last annual meeting. No, for the current. For the current, oh, sorry. Yes, yes they the included current, our yeah. minutes from the, okay. Yes, Move I'm getting approve. ahead of myself. Okay, we got Carlos, Betsy, um, we got Carlos, move to approve. I'll second, this is Mary. We got Mary seconding. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hi. Oh, I think I think that was Carrie. Did you say I for um, your um, your came in? I think the delay. Were you opposed at all, Carrie? It sounded like you came in at the. Post, I am not opposed. You are not opposed. <laughs> not okay. opposed. <laughs> okay, that was fast. Um, okay, so um, the next action item is to approve the minutes of uh, last year's annual meeting, the July 16, twenty nineteen minutes. I move approval. This is Mary. Second, okay. Carlos. Okay. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Great. So we got that um, taken care of. So the next one is the election of officers for the next year. Um, we have a new board member. So, um, and I, by way of background, I think it's good to touch base on this every year. So. I'm, my name is Rachel Steenholt. I've been the president of the board for at least a couple of years now. The years seem to went. Yeah, <laughs> both of them. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> at least two or maybe three. Um, and then Mary, you're our um, you're our vice president, and um, I made I made a plug at the last meeting. I uh, the role has been really an honor to be able to do. Um, to do this, it's been it's given me a unique opportunity to get to work with Tim, and um, we've had various subcommittees, which you don't have to be in this role to, to do the subcommittees, but um, it's just been a great learning experience, I think, to um, serve in that capacity. And while, uh, you know, um, at the same time, I don't have a monopoly over it. So I want to, I certainly want to give <laughs> other people the opportunity to serve in this capacity. Um, so I want this to be, um, you know, I'm happy to do it again, but I also want this to be an opportunity for people who have the gumption to want to give this a shot. Um, it's great. Um, you'll learn a lot. Uh, it's been great. 
So, um, and in the vice president role, I don't know if uh, Mary wants to speak to that at all. Um, if there's anything to say, you've had to, if meetings I've been absent, you've That's run true. them. So vice president is probably the easiest job. Uh, <laughs> you do occasionally have to pinch hit for the president, but um, it's not, not real difficult. So Rachel has been great to work with though. And, and Tim of course is great to work with. So anytime you have questions, it's, it's, you know, there's always open, open doors and open phones. So yeah, I don't know. Vice president's easy. I'm, <laughs> it is, but it's also fun. I mean, it's fun to be able to occasionally run the meeting. So yeah. yeah. So I have a question for whoever becomes the next president. Um, will Rachel be around to provide guidance and yes. mentorship? Yes, that is a great question, Mary. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely, um, I'm not going anywhere. I think my term is still Tim for a couple more years. Yeah, Again, I, the years blend, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they really do. So, um, but I think I, um, yeah, I think I got some time. So um, I'm around, um, but I, I, you know, I, I do think that um, there's healthiness in, turn, in, in turnover to, to that extent. Um, you know, same person doing it over mm -hmm. and over again. But um, so, um, yes, I would certainly be around to field questions or comments or concerns um, if anybody is interested in that role. Um, you could nominate somebody. I Rachel. could nominate. I don't put anybody on. Nobody has reached out to me between the last at, meeting and this meeting. At um, the same time, I think, and uh, I, I agree with everything you said, uh, at the same time, in the moment of crisis, I think continuity is... Uh, there's Maybe the better. Yeah. Well. There's something to be said to that too. And then if folks um, want me to is continue. That a, is that a nomination, Carlos? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, okay. You want me to? I, I would like to uh, nominate for uh, President Rachel and for Vice President Mary to stay in there. Unless they have some objection uh, to continuing in these roles, uh, I think uh, the continuity would be appreciated by everybody involved. Then we Speak up if you, would, if you disagree with that. Don't we call for any other nominations? Sure, yes, absolutely. If there's anybody else um, who is interested in either of those positions, um, by all means, um, you know, um, nominate. nominate, go ahead. Um, even yourself, if you, if anybody's, you know, don't wait for somebody else to nominate you. If you, if you have some interest, speak up. Um, we do this once, once a year, so um, I'm gonna, Pause and open the floor. Just to, uh, to confirm, these positions are for one year terms, correct? That is correct. Each year, so um, each year we will have this meeting next July and we will revisit this conversation at that point. So, um, so these are great questions, Mary. <laughs> Still pausing for nominations. Call the question. <laughs> Carlos. Call the question. I'll nominate myself. What the heck? I'll well, president. for president, yes. For okay. president. Oh, oh great. Um, uh, okay. I mean, I, I think, you know, I would be honored to follow in Rachel's footsteps. Well, well. Does it, it's, that is great. Is there anybody who's interested in vice president now that that's open? <laughs> um, I would nominate myself for vice president um if well if no go. you know to, <laughs> there you go then we get a change of swap. a change of the <laughs> change of the landscape guards. but still continuity but still, there you go that, the best small world ah, and like if that. you have any questions you know um there's always a pinch hitter here who can you know come on in but it honestly it's great it's been great and it's been an honor to serve in this capacity and i think you'd be excellent at it um so i'm gonna pause one more time for any more nominations move to close nomination <laughs> Second. Okay, so we need a second for closing um, the nominations. For closing the nominations. Okay. I'll I'll second. Okay, we got a second. It's Chris. This, okay. Um, all in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Well, what are we voting on? On closing nominations. On closing nominations. Got it. Okay. okay. Sorry. Got it. Okay. Um, any opposed? No. Okay. So that's approved. So then, and by closing the nominations, do we then have we elected the positions as well? No. Then the, you have to. No, go. we do. No. The first one is the nomination of you as president, and Mary as vice president. And the, so then you have a vote on that. Okay. And then the vote for vice versa. Okay. So you, 
the first was the Carlos oh, nominations yes. of you as the continuity, as you as yes. president, and yes. Mary as vice yes. president. So, so you say, who's all in favor of Carlos nomination okay. of Rachel Steenhold yeah. and Mary Bachelor as vice president? Perfect. Okay. And if there's silence, then it's like, can you vote for both? <laughs> That would defeat the purpose and make us start this all over again. So I'm just going to put that out there um, if Don't folks are it. planning on doing that. Um, thanks, Tim, for also helping us out with this process. I was hoping uh, always funky. Betsy would step in and save us. but <laughs> Normally she... Uh... I saw Betsy yawning earlier. <laughs> um, Rachel and Mary, you could both deny the nomination for the position that you don't want, and then you could just do one vote. Okay, so... Um... So we can deny it. Okay, so we can we're so we're denying Carlos's, Carlos's proposal. And nomination. sorry. That's okay. All right, Carlos. I don't take it personally. Yeah. Um, this time. You're denying. <laughs> we're denying Carlos's proposal and we're um you nomination. know we're nomination. And then um, we're revisiting the nomination where Mary um, would be do we have to do these individually or do we do this as a group? We do this as a group. Let's call group. the question. Oh, call called. Okay, so we'll call the question. I'm I'm ending this um, on a high on a <laughs> very fluid. Call, uh, this um, is Rachel's rules of order, just yeah, for right. the just for the record. <laughs> yes, yeah. instead of Robert's a smoke filled room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're putting this to um, Mary as president, me as vice pre president, um, as a vote. If or well, not, well, we would need a second. Yeah. You first no, that was a nomination. I don't think you need, you need a, a motion first. We need a motion for nominate. We need a motion for oh, nominating. No, for the Mary. vote to vote on the nomination. To vote no. on, we need a. So oh. moved. Okay, thank you, Carlos. That's a second. So we need a. No, you, we need you a second. second. You getting this, uh, Betsy? She is okay. <laughs> it's just keeping her away. Anybody want to be a second? Carrie Peterson second. Carrie so. Peterson wants to be a second. Okay, so okay. all um, any discussion. Any more discussion? No. All in favor? Just, to, clear, just to clarify, you have to say I motion or I make a motion that Rachel or uh, Mary Bachelor be president and Rachel Steenhold be vice president. That's what the motion is. Okay, I make a motion for Mary Bachelor be president and Rachel Steenhold to be vice president. Um, so we don't have to go through that again, right? Because Carlos sec if Carlos said his part, then Chris said her part. And we're at the all in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hey. Hey. That was a we got there. We <laughs> got there. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that um, closes the action. Changing items. of the guard. Changing oh. of the guard. It's official. Um, so I'm going to just say one last time then um, how much I've enjoyed this. Um, well, and learn from it, and it's been an honor um, to do so, and I'm grateful to serve in the vice president capacity. So I'm excited to see what that will bring, and Mary is going to do excellent this next year. So, um, so we'll remember exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll remember to swap seats next time because I may okay, forget. So yep. August will be um, our our next meeting is in August, so we will officially adjourn this meeting and see y'all next month.